And I'm Stephanie. And we are talking about our fossil dig inquiry that we are doing in our science class. Um, we came up with three testable questions based on the focus question of what is a fossil. Now, um, one of our first questions was, what are fossils made of? And our claim was fossils are made of traces from past organisms left in minerals or sediment, which forms rock. And our evidence is that um, most fossils are made to resemble rock, like the is showing, and students can understand that fossils are made from minerals and um, not dead animal or plant parts, because that's one of the common misconceptions that students have when you talk about fossils. So although we didn't have real fossils, we made sure that the model fossils we made, they're made out of clay and they're baked hard so that students will relate them more with rock rather than dead animal parts. The next question we had was, what types of fossils are there? Um, our claim was that there were many different types of fossils, and we're not so much focused on students knowing what the names of them are, just that they see the differences. So there's skeleton fossils, um, fossils of insects encased in amber, there's leaf imprints, footprints, casts, molds, all of those differences that they should be seeing. And the evidence, um, in the dig activity, the model fossils that we have, they represent all those different kinds of fossils. So there's a cast fossil of a shell, a leaf imprint, eggs, dinosaur droppings, and so on. Um, we also have ones of insects encased in amber, really hot way. But, um, and then as you can see behind us, we have our fossil dig quartered off. We have Sand, we also have rocks in there as our second layer. And then our third and final layer is the soil. We have um, fossils buried in there so the students can do their own excavations of finding their own fossils and they can do, you know, hands out of them. And the dig site is also divided on top into a grid so that while they're finding their fossils, they'll be able to map where they found it. Our third question is, what can you tell about a fossil from the depth at which it is found? Um, and our claim is that fossils in lower, deeper layer, layers are older, and fossils that are higher in the dig site are newer. Um, they're so old, but they don't... Relatively new. Yet. Yeah. Um, and the evidence for that, we are going to... The evidence for that, as Nicole showed you a moment ago, the layers in the dig site, they represent different layers of sediment in the real world. And there will be a guided class discussion on how that layer that you find the fossils in is related to age. Um, and the fourth question that we came up with, we thought was very interesting. Um, what can fossils tell us about the organisms that they are from? Um, and the claim is that fossils can help us make inferences about an organism's size or their diet, their habitat, their lifestyle, maybe their migration patterns, anything like that. Um, and the evidence is this book, Ooh. The Mysteries of the Fossil Dig, which we seem to have misplaced. Uh -huh. Okay, the evidence is Mysteries of the Fossil Dig by Pamela Rushby, and we will be reading a passage from this book that helps explain ways that you can make inferences about fossils. And that is an important thing we want to understand about fossils is that the reason we study them is to learn about the organisms that they were left behind from. Okay, and back to our focus question, what is a fossil? Um, fossils are made of many different things, there are many different types, like we were saying, and there's um, they have different ages based on where they're found. There are there's mold fossils, there's cast fossils. Now what is a mold fossil? Now a mold fossil is something that leaves an, an imprint. So rather than a seashell that's shaped like a seashell like this, 
it looks like a seashell was pressed into it and taken away. So that would be a mold fossil. Okay, and then the opposite is a cast fossil, which is basically a fossil that formed by filling out a mold. Then there's also fossilized droppings. Now, why did you? Well, why would we put those in our fossil bin? We would like students to understand that fossils aren't only remnants of skeletons, but there can also be fossils such as droppings or even footprints, like this one. And collectively, these are called trace fossils um, because they're not left over from the body of the organism, but just things that they left behind in their environment. So as we said before, um, it's not important to us that the young students understand the terms for these, but rather that there's all these different types of fossils and they can form in different ways. That's really the understanding that we're looking for with this activity. Okay, and then there's also, um, you can tell how old the fossil is based on where you find it in the big site, like we said before. Um, the reason that they would be older in the lower layer of the dig site would be because um, that is the layer of sediment that has formed first. And in most cases, um, the ground layers form on top of one another. So the ones that are lower down have been there the longest, and those fossils will be the oldest. Um, so in general, that is something that we will convey through the evidence of a guided discussion and trying to get students to understand and come up with on their own how age might be related to the layer where we find the fossil. Yeah, and when we do our lesson in the Baldwin Center, we are um, assessing the students to see what they already know, what they want to know, and um, we're going to help guide them um, from their misconceptions, and hopefully they will learn what fossils are, like we said. Okay, and one last thing. Um, some of the common misconceptions that we are looking for that we might see in the Baldwin Center a lot of students think fossils are made out of dead animal parts or dead plant parts when in fact that's mineral that has replaced those things. And then the second and final misconception is that fossils are really rare when we want them to understand that fossils are common and everywhere. So we will also convey that through the books and the fossils. Well, thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Bye!